Labrit. Good morning, dear ladies and gentlemen, friends and excellencies. Uh, let me welcome uh, you to the Latvian Capital Market Forum 2023. My name is Edis Bosch. I'm going to be uh, your moderator. Uh, and I must say, I am looking forward to this. Uh, please, if you haven't already, uh, take a brief look uh, at our agenda for today. It is really packed with remarkable speakers. The Prime Minister is here, the Finance Minister is here, the Governor of the Bank of Latvia is here, um, Chair of the European Securities and Markets Authority is here, European and Baltic market, uh, capital market experts, business leaders, uh, public sector representatives. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for contributing. In addition to a selection of keynote addresses, we will also hold four panel discussions today. Uh, hence, this promises to be a very, very busy day, but I'm quite certain that at the end of today, uh, we will all say, hell, it was worth it. Um, just a few housekeeping announcements before we begin. We have so many different guests from different countries, um, and therefore our working language until lunch is English. We are being streamed online um, on the forum webpage and on the Bank of Latvia's social media accounts and the translation uh, into Latvia is available if you uh, watch us online. We also have a Slido tool ready. Um, hopefully, uh, you have a smartphone, uh, some of you do, um, so <clears throat> if you can, please do log on with the code name uh, that you see here on the screen, uh, Capital Forums 2023. Um, questions, but also comments, reflections, whatever uh, you have to say or uh, contribute, uh, we welcome that on that Slido tool over there, so please do log on. Growth loves those who dare. Uh, that is our motto for today, and I'm quite sure that's also something that uh, the governor of the Bank of Latvia, Martin Kazars, will touch upon as he opens the forum. Governor, please. Labdien. Prieks jūs visus redzēt. Man gan grūti jūs redzēt, jo gājas un viss acīs, bet prieks tiešām jūs redzēt šajā pasākumā. Tas ir itgadējis, un mēs tā arī turpināsim, jo šī ir ļoti svarīga joma. Pāri jau uz angļu valodu. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, Prime Minister Krišāns Kariņš, Minister of Finance, Arvils Ašarādens, Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honoured to open our annual Capital Markets Forum. And uh, as you can see, this year it's very ambitiously titled uh, Growth Loves Those Who Dare, and it certainly does, and we do dare. Um, I like the ambition because ambition is what drives growth. Uh, previously, this forum was organized and spearheaded by FCMC. Uh, since January 1st this year, FCMC has joined Latvia's Bank, and we are now a much broader, a stronger team with a more forceful and comprehensive view and more aligned set of tools to support and drive financial sector development. My former FCMC colleagues are now my current colleagues at the bank, and Santa Purgaile, as you will see her in the, in the front row, um, as decisively as ever, will continue to spearhead both this forum and our work to grow and develop Latvian capital markets. Um, why are capital markets so important? It's because it's all about health, dynamism, and resilience of our economy. Ultimately, of course, it's about the incomes, well-being, sustainability, and quality of life of our society. Incomes, productivity, economic growth are all driven by investments. Unfortunately, 
we see that investment activity in Latvia has been falling behind that of our peers. And as a society, we must do better than that. Richer, more developed, more dynamic, and more diversified capital markets is one element which has been so far grossly underutilized. It hides great potential to reinvigorate investments and grow the Latvian economy. And not only the Latvian economy, we think much bigger. We think bigger. We think that it's about the Baltics and it's about Europe. In 2021, we started the tradition of organizing this Latvian Capital Markets Forum by bringing together industry professionals, entrepreneurs, public administration, and investors to identify and address the issues that must be resolved to realize the untapped potential of capital markets in 2020. FCMC, together with the Latvian capital market participants, developed a 10-step program for development of the Latvian capital market. This 10-step program consists of three key building blocks which interact with each other, issuers, investors, and the government. We paid careful attention to those blocks and together with our public and private sector partners derived concrete action plans to be included in the National Financial Sector Development Plan for 2021-23. Our partners have assessed our work so far on the 10-point scale with 8.5. I can truly say well done. Well done. Uh, it's good, but clearly it indicates potential for further improvement. More work is needed to open possibilities for domestic and foreign capital flows to fund business investment, to provide investors with an opportunity to invest in the development of the Latvian economy. The size and liquidity, of course, is very important for the capital market. Unfortunately, so far, we see that it is still very small and there is a long way to go. It's clearly, the glass is clearly, in this respect, half empty rather than half full. The need for stronger and deeper, truly dynamic and diversified capital markets is acute in all of Europe. Capital Markets Union is a no-brainer. Yes, we all would benefit from stronger and more integrated capital markets. Uh, it has clear political support, yet technically it's a very complex project to deliver. There's lots of nitty-gritty. Um, it involves a very broad set of participants. For instance, it does not suffice that the Minister of Finance cooperates with the central bank. It requires coordinated involvement of Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Economics, and many others. And therefore, I am especially glad to see among us today Prime Minister Christian Skaric, uh, since the creation of a vibrant market requires support and participation across all parts of the government and across the countries. Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you for participation in today's forum. I am sure that we shall have insightful and productive discussions, and these discussions will be followed by resolve and implementation of the action plan. Thank you very much. This is an important conversation we are having here today, and that is underscored by the uh, presence of the Prime Minister here today as well. So, Prime Minister, please, the floor is yours. Paldies, labrīt visiem. Good morning. I have to say that uh, this is, for me, the highlight of my day. I'm not saying the rest of the day is planned to be uh, not so good, but I have, uh, from the day uh, Martin Škazaks uh, invited me to come speak, I was very excited because the topic of developing capital markets is, in my mind, one of the central uh, bits of the puzzle that we need to uh, solve uh, to uh, uh, 
enliven uh, or to bring to be the economic transformation of our economy that my government has set out to do. Uh, our country has been uh, through quite a lot. I'm sure any prime minister of any country in Europe can say those same words and they're completely true. Who hasn't? Uh, in our case, uh, after uh, the long Soviet occupation and the privatization, um, the privatization process, uh, although necessary, left in uh, the taste of many people in our country a feeling that it was not quite a very fair uh, process and it involved elements of, of uh, less than honest uh, uh, action taken at the time by various politicians, some of whom were uh, very high standing in government uh, uh, even. And uh, that legacy is like a ball in a chain which is not letting us move forward. If we want to develop capital markets in Latvia, we have to start with what are always called the low hanging fruit. So we have some fantastic companies which are growing, which have the turnover in a few hundred million, which are medium-sized companies on a European scale, but, but they're completely modern, they're competing around the world, uh, all in high-tech and very high value-added uh, uh, exports. But they are still rather small uh, to go to the market. But what we have is a whole bunch of state enterprises that are also uh, huge, have a tremendous growth potential outside of this country, and for political reasons and emotional sentimental reasons, I still, I, I tried in the last government, I have to admit this is one of, the, one of the regrets I had. For four years I tried to convince my colleagues that we have to change our thinking. And for four years my colleagues in government disagreed with me. And so here we are again, I'm at the start of a new government. I don't have four partners, I have three, uh, that is two other partners I need to work with, a little easier maybe. And I'm trying to convince them that allowing a state enterprise, almost any state enterprise, to be partially floated on the stock exchange does not mean stealing or privatization in the old 1990s sense of the word. Uh, we have uh, uh, our uh, big energy giant. And the energy giant, together with our big forestry giant, created a joint company to develop wind farms. This is a new company uh, which will need to raise close to a billion euros in order to uh, generate uh, the kind of cash needed to put up the wind capacity that our nation needs. And uh, there are two ways to do this. One is that the company, as a fully state-owned uh, entity, will uh, solely gather up the steam and uh, 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 put the project into play. Another is to let this company tap the potential of investors to uh, maybe go above and beyond what they're looking at today. Um, I'm, as a prime minister, as many people in my country, I'm always looking around, what are other people doing? And incidentally, politics is one of the, one of the fields where cheating is actually good. We're taught in school, uh, don't cheat. Uh, it's very important that you learn uh, algebra yourself. And, and I agree with that uh, sentiment. I told it to my kids uh, as well. Uh, but uh, see, in politics, in a nation building, uh, why reinvent the wheel when you can just look at how the wheel is made and then take the wheel and see if you can make it a little better? It's a little bit like programmers thinking. You don't write code from scratch. You take the best of what exists and you improve on it. And when we look around, uh, we see that one of the companies which is competing in Latvia very effectively is Enefit Green, an Estonian company, floated on the stock exchange. This company uh, has uh, the potential far beyond Estonia's economy to grow far beyond Estonia's borders. And I want our companies to answer in kind. We have private companies which are competing, which are buying assets abroad and expanding their market share. Fantastic. But we need our state companies to be unleashed. It's like this tremendous potential that I see. And politically speaking, the decision-making is difficult because of the 
of the ball and chain of people falsely thinking that going to the capital markets is equivalent to stealing, as it was sometimes in the 1990s. And if we can break this thought process, we can unleash a fantastic potential uh, for these companies to open the door for other companies to go into the capital market. Uh, I, I was speaking with the governor of the Bank of Latvia just before the conference, and, and uh, I said, do you know how large our capital market is relative to GDP? Um, I, I believe he didn't know exactly, as I don't know exactly, but the reason is it's so small you need a magnifying lens to try to see that number. It's almost insignificant. Sadly, I, could, I think I could say that if the capital market, if the stock exchange were closed tomorrow, um, maybe our economy wouldn't even feel it that much. And that is a terrible, terrible realization. As a country, I am convinced that what is holding us back the most is our own way of thinking. We have to break with the past and move into the future. And developing the capital markets, letting our state enterprises open the door is the best and the fastest and the most reasonable way to go. And as the Prime Minister, I will continue to speak publicly as today, privately behind closed doors. I'll drink five cups of coffee if I have to, to convince my colleagues that this is the way to go. And I have a fantastic uh, uh, a champion by my side, the Minister of Finance, Mr. Arvils Asheradens, and the two of us putting our shoulders together will do everything to make this happen. Thank you very much. Um, we'll note the promise of the five cups of coffee, and, uh, <laughs> and then we'll look. Uh, at you. How do you feel? All right, thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, the Finance Minister, Arvel Sashradens, is here as well, and I don't know what his calendar uh, says for today, but in line with the Prime Minister, um, I'd like to think that for him, this event is also the highlight of his day. Hopefully so. Minister, please. Uh, good morning, Excellencies. Good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, what I should say after those two brilliant speakers. But of course, I have uh, something to add, but a but little bit restructure my thoughts. Uh, well, number one, uh, Prime Minister says uh, that is his uh, highlight of, of today. I have uh, two highlights, actually, a little bit more than that. Uh, Prime Minister happy. Yesterday, government voted for budget, and that's it. Uh, uh, for me, it means today I have to clean my suitcase and pack it in order to deliver tomorrow at the Parliament. But um, regarding today's topic, uh, it, is, it is very important, and uh, this is one of... Uh, uh, my uh, top priorities in uh, this political cadence to being uh, Minister of Finance. And if we uh, look on uh, the stock market capitalization in Latvia, it's really extremely low, and it's just uh, around 2% of GDP. If we compare with European average 54 uh, or 17 Estonian, uh, for example, and uh, and my thinking goes in line with uh, what the Prime Minister said, uh, and uh, it is, I will put in context, uh, we had a very interesting uh, government formation process, and uh, Prime Minister's idea was to put uh, the process the other way around. Uh, the traditional process was uh, distribution of seats among uh, coalition parties and then priorities. Uh, Prime Minister this time said, uh, let's start different. Uh, let's start with priorities and, and then seats. And uh, that's really worked very well. And, uh, and uh, as uh, transformation of the economy, as uh, Latvia's way to welfare state, uh, Latvia's uh, way to welfare state was really worked well. And we're working on that. And, and as the Prime Minister says, we're right now in a government putting together the puzzle what it really means, economical transformation. And a lot of things already was said. And, uh, 
and it was we want to we want to see top class education system we want to see top class digital system uh, we want to see a uh, very good organized labor market uh, uh, support system and of course capital markets that was one of the most complex discussion uh, co capital market development what was uh, one of the most uh, complex discussion what we had I, I at the moment i can't say that all partners in coalition are are uh, uh, extremely supportive extremely supportive but uh, but uh, we agreed on that and 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 uh, that gave us a green light at least for myself to really to put this as a uh, one of the now let's say top and actually i'm Let's say number one priority. Uh, let's say after budgeting and tax system. Uh, 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 let's say uh, evaluation uh, to to the mar uh, capital market development. And um, if we if we look into what should be done, number one is is I'm really congratulate uh, Governor Bank uh, with this extremely uh, with excellent. Uh, capital market development plan and I would like to confirm um, readiness of the Ministry of Finance and Government to uh, join a crew here and and I might say there is a I'm looking a little bit different than uh, Governor on, on the issues. And I would say there are really uh, four extremely important elements in this. Number one is uh, government and, uh, sure, uh, let's say bank and government, and government and bank joining forces. And later on, I'll a little bit elaborate that, but there are three more important system, uh, things. Ecosystem of capital market, uh, businesses, and society. And uh, let's start with society. Uh, society are not in favor of capital market developments. What we see, uh, what we see results, what I already mentioned this. Uh, we see there's a lot of uh, stereotypes in society are, and, and Prime Minister uh, has spoken about that. And if we uh, speak, it's about pension systems, about how to make savings. And if we, for example, uh, Let's say compare Anglo-Saxon model, where it's, it's based on mortgage, uh, mortgages uh, like uh, like Scandinavian uh, Scandinavian uh, societies based on little uh, investment portfolio in in, in share in uh, shares of uh, Scandinavian companies or maybe wo uh, world-class companies. Uh, uh, Latvi Latvians are more live on savings in uh, savings in the bank. Actually, not savings, just uh, uh, have money in account and nothing happens. And what we uh, see is uh, floating levels between 10 and 12 uh, billion accruals in accounts that says uh, that a lot should be done and this, this money could work uh, more efficiently. Uh, the businesses, and uh, that's that's very important part of society too, and and a lot of researchers about comp competitiveness say uh, maybe there is a less problem with politics. Uh, they, maybe there is more problem with uh, business practices, and 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 in in, in reality. Uh, some managers are not always uh, are uh, want to uh, want to join capital markets in order uh, to having more uh, more how to say transparency of what they do, and uh, and and that's an other huge segment where we have to do a lot uh, work, uh, educate, uh, speak about uh, better better uh, better practices. An ecosystem is very important, uh, very important uh, segment, and we really have to look into this. And I, I might say, um, one of the su key success factors in, in order to build the startup uh, startup system here was the creation of ecosystem, and that uh, that was done by by government. And we really carefully followed to elements, practical elements, what has been needed, and that was done. And I might say uh, already. The many elements are in place, but many elements missing, and, and we have to work on that. And finally, government. Uh, I'm very happy to hear bank is 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 ready to become a tugboat and 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 move brings the ship into 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 the open seas and and, and make it floating. And I might say uh, we are ready to work hard. And Prime Minister confirms that that is uh, government's priority, and Ministry of Finance is that's. That's a priority, T. We, we are already uh, working with uh, old plans, and we want to join those plans with with a bank. And and I'm clear uh, 
we will reach our uh, we will uh, reach our targets and and about targets very important to discuss too if we today have uh, two percent of uh, uh, market capitalization i might say in in uh, in this political cadence in four years from now i would be happy if we might have uh, around nine to ten percent that's all from my, uh, myself, and I really wish you very fruitful uh, discussions and, and good speakers, and I hope the result will follow. Thank you. Very well. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Asher Adens. So, um, we, our next speaker is... Verena Ross, that is our uh, first keynote address today. Um, Verena Ross is chair of the European Securities and Markets Authority, and she will talk to us about the challenges and opportunities of the European capital markets. Once again, let me remind you that um, your questions and comments are welcome on our Slido page, uh, hopefully. Yes, the code is over there. Um, we will try to um, kind of re-integrate uh, the questions and comments um, and forward them to our speakers as we uh, receive them. Verena, please. Thank you Morning. very much. Nice to see you. Morning. Cheers. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies. It's a wonderful uh, occasion to be here with you today at the Latvian Capital Markets Forum. And I should say it's not only the highlight of my day, because I'm in Riga especially for this purpose, but it's the highlight of my week to be here with you. And I want to thank the governor and Santa Bugalev and her whole team for organizing this very important conference. Let me take the opportunity to also acknowledge the important move and change that took place at the 1st of January in your country when it comes to the supervisory structure with the integration of the Financial and Capital Markets Commission into the central bank. I am sure that that change will not change the very successful cooperation that we have had and will hopefully continue to have with you and the European Securities and Markets Authority. I'm Verena Ross, I'm the chair of ESMA, and my intervention today will focus on how capital markets may allow us to overcome the current economic and geopolitical challenges that we are facing. And in that, I will talk about the work that ESMA is doing at European level, but very importantly also how we cooperate with the national supervisors in the individual countries, including here in Latvia. Hopefully, my remarks will spur on some insightful discussions that will help to take you through the day. Before I proceed with my remarks, let me start by setting the wider context. The environment we are currently living in is one of growing inflationary pressures and soaring prices. Inflation has been on the rise across all countries to levels last seen decades ago. But it has been particularly pronounced in the Baltics, where annual uh, rates rose above 20% last year and have been consistently very high. A general trend of higher inflation has been aggravated by supply-side bottlenecks arising from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which obviously you also feel very closely being so close here to the border. The role of both countries, Russia and Ukraine, in the global commodities markets have caused high fluctuations in the prices of energies, metals and food. With rising inflation, monetary policy tightening gathered pace globally. Decades of low interest rates are coming to an end. All in all, global growth is poised to slow down to 2.9% this year compared to 34 percent last year, according to the IMF projections. A similar trend is also expected this year in the Baltics when you look at the projections, which only start showing a small rebound in 2024, according to the OECD in uh, all three countries. The question, therefore, is how to ensure growth 
amid so many challenges. I strongly believe the answer lies in the development of EU capital markets. Having strong capital markets can boost resilience to economic shocks and stimulate sound and sustainable growth for the future. Advancing the development of effective capital markets is key to ensuring a deeper and more resilient financial system and ultimately a stronger economy. Companies need funding to grow to face the twin challenges of sustainability and technological transformation. Citizens need to enhance savings for their old age and European pension systems are facing significant challenges. So we need to look at capital markets for solutions here as well. Most companies today in Europe rely on bank credit. To diversify funding and make new funding sources available, we need to move away from pure bank funding. Furthermore, we should move from debt to equity issuance to counter the current high level of indebtedness of companies, households and governments. Through effective capital markets, we can also enable European citizens to invest their money, enhance their savings and participate in the growth of the companies that they want to support. This should be a virtuous circle. On top of that fragmentation, on top of that, the fragmentation of the European capital markets makes it more difficult and costly for companies to access capital and for investors to diversify their portfolio. By creating a single market for capital, the CMU project can help to reduce those costs and increase the flow of capital where it is most needed. The CMU project can also play a role in addressing the ongoing challenges of climate change and sustainable development. We need to mobilize private capital towards these important long-term goals. Equally relevant in the CMU project is the national experience. The national competent authorities play a pivotal role in ensuring the smooth functioning of the EU capital markets by implementing and enforcing, where necessary, EU legislation at the national level. They are responsible for the supervision of their respective financial markets, ensuring that they operate in a fair and transparent manner and protect the interests of investors and consumers. And that's not just investors and consumers in their own country, but also those in EU countries where their firms are providing services cross-border. ESMA will continue driving forward in cooperation with national authorities a set of actions that supports the development of effective and stable capital markets. This is one of the priorities under the recently published ESMA strategy for the next five years. Let me now turn to this and some other aspects of this strategy. First of all, effective markets and financial stability remain a strategic priority for ESMA. In the current environment, it is more important than ever that the single market is resilient to economic shocks while stimulating sound and sustainable growth for the future. This also means improving access to a wide range of funding and investment possibilities for companies. To contribute to the creation of a deep, efficient, liquid and accessible EU single market in financial services, ESMA will continue to refine and simplify the rule book that is governing this market while ensuring also its consistent application and effective supervision across the whole of the EU together with the national competent authorities. What will be the concrete steps here? Let me just give you a few examples. One is, for example, the so-called European single access point. It will be a public one-stop shop for financial and sustainability related information on companies and investment products. We will play a role in driving this forward to give investors the information they need to make informed investment decisions and provide companies with better visibility. Another one is the proposal to build consolidated tapes to create more transparency on the trading that is taking place in the European markets. 
Both these new responsibilities and projects will be challenging, but they're important parts to developing an effective European capital market. Equally important to gear up European capital markets is the strengthening of certain rules and finding ways to carefully alleviate some of the burdens for companies that want or need to raise capital in Europe. This may in turn reduce costs and enhance incentives for such companies to list on public markets. And I think you, Prime Minister, spoke about some of the smaller companies, medium-sized companies, that actually could use that route for finding funding, as well as the state-owned companies. In this sense, we welcome, as ESMA, the listing package proposal, which was recently published by the European Commission, and its ambition to improve the ability for small and medium-sized enterprises and other companies to access public markets. Finally, but by no means least, let me briefly touch on the importance of not only having effective, but also stable markets. The recent developments that I've referred to at the beginning of my remarks, I think underline the importance of this mandate of ESMA for financial stability. Despite high market volatility and large trading volumes, European markets and their key market infrastructures have shown remarkable resilience. In this environment of elevated risk, it will continue to be important to closely observe markets and aim to detect any risks or threats to financial stability. And again, this is a joint undertaking between the European level and the national supervisory authorities on the ground. This leads me on to ESMA's second strategic priority, which is about strengthening supervision of EU financial markets. The single rule book has grown significantly over recent years and continues to expand. At ESMA, we've gone ourselves from supervising credit rating agencies to now also directly overseeing other financial entities, such as trade and securitization repositories, data reporting service providers, systemically important CCPs from third countries, and critical benchmark administrators. Logically, having these entities supervised at EU level by ESMA has created a unified culture and approach to such market players in Europe. It is vital that we ensure consistent interpretation and supervision of the single rule book across the entire EU market, both for the benefit of corporates and of retail investors, wherever they are based. Where the supervisory responsibilities are at national level, which is obviously the case for the vast majority of the financial markets, ESMA is committed to building a common EU supervisory culture based on share the shared principles of being risk-based, data-driven and outcome-focused. We play an active role in promoting this shared supervisory culture among national authorities, allowing each other to learn from the experiences and sharing and working towards sound, efficient and consistent supervision. We also issue guidance and help by conducting common assessments or common supervisory actions. In addition to our supervisory convergence toolkit, there have been added recently the so-called Union Strategic Supervisory Priorities. These USSPs are a crucial tool to enable us as ESMA to coordinate the supervision that is happening across the national supervisory authorities on relevant topics. The goal is to provide a systematic and comprehensive approach to address key market risks throughout the EU. In October last year, we updated our USSPs to include uh, recent developments. And so, in addition to looking at the continued importance of data quality for the markets as a whole, we are also now focusing in, on enhanced supervision on ESG disclosures to counter the greenwashing risks. This year, we will also continue developing trusted networks of supervisors to enable the exchange of information across national supervisors, for example, through voluntary colleges and other means. As I said, it's important that we continue to learn from each other and share the experiences that we make 
across the different countries. In a way, the financial markets here in Latvia and in the Baltics more generally are a fantastic example of how close supervisory cooperation cross-border can work in practice. The Central Bank of Latvia and the Central Bank of Lithuania, as well as the Estonian Financial Supervision and Resolution Authority, are actively contributing to co the construction of a common supervisory approach in the EU, vis-à-vis, -vis, for example, the three NASDAQ Baltic stock exchanges and the CSD under one Baltic roof. I would now like to shift my focus and delve into the topic of investor protection, which remains at the heart of our strategic priorities. Overall, our goal is to enable retail investors to safely participate in financial markets and rely on high quality regulatory information. The COVID pandemic has accelerated the digitalization of financial services, making investing more accessible and resulting in increased participation of retail investors in the capital markets. This trend of investors diversifying their savings beyond the poor holding their cash in a bank deposit and exploring other investment options to meet their long-term financial goals is clearly positive. As regulators and supervisors, we should, however, not disregard important risks that these investors might be facing. We've seen investors being targeted by aggressive marketing or by social media campaigns that are trying to influence and promote high-risk, unsuitable investment options. To com combat this, it is crucial that we take joint measures to protect investors and restore trust in the efficiency and integrity of European capital markets. In the, against this backdrop, ESMA, together with the other European supervisory authorities and national authorities, launched already quite some time ago an EU-wide campaign to sensitize consumers that many crypto assets are highly risky and speculative. And here again, the three Baltic authorities helped in disseminating this message through their website and social media publications. I think our joint actions are key to rebuilding and ensuring consumer trust in the market, which is something that is really at a low level, according to our information. While ongoing supervisory attention is essential for investor protection, the forthcoming retail investment strategy by the European Commission will also be crucial to achieve better outcomes for investors and rebuild trust. In our recommendations to the Commission last year, we have suggested various measures, including reducing the often overwhelming amount of information investors face and utilizing effective online engagement while obviously being conscious of the risk that some of that will entail as well. I very much hope that the upcoming proposals on this will be bold and that it will make it easier for investors to get the key information and unbiased advice that they need to take well-informed investment decisions. Alongside all three core priorities, effective and stable markets, strong supervision and enhanced investor protection, our work will continue to be influenced by two major factors that are fundamentally changing the financial markets, the shift towards sustainable economy and the growth of data and technology advancements. NCAs will be instrumental in the endeavor to utilize the power of new technologies. We need to build on the experience of local markets. The Baltic states are a very good example of regulatory knowledge acquired in the context of financial hubs and regulatory sandboxes. In the last couple of years, you've implemented regulatory frameworks for fintechs, which have tr attracted relevant market players. We need to benefit from your knowledge and experience to build safe environments in which data and technology innovations can thrive. I began my remarks today outlining some of the significant challenges we are currently facing. The days of cheap money and low inflation are clearly no longer with us, and globalization as we have known it can no longer ta be taken for granted. A thriving and efficient capital market system should play a crucial role in addressing these challenges on fulfilling long-term societal needs. The joint role of the ba Baltic authorities and the other NCAs working with us at ESMA in driving forward the regulatory and supervisory conditions 
for effective and stable European markets that serve the retail investor cannot be overstated. You will be able to provide the local expertise, knowledge and support necessary to ensure that we are going to be successful. Thank you very much indeed and I look forward to the discussions to come. Thank you. The far and seat. Thank you very much.